Hello. Yeah. So I want to quickly talk about the concept of pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, otherwise called PID for short. Uh, you'll be hearing women talk about, uh, they, I was told that I have PID. So what is a PID? PID is an infection, an ascending infection from the lower genital tract towards the upper genital tract that is not necessarily due to pregnancy, tumor or, or surgery. And uh, usually women can have what we call serpingitis, the ovary, the, uh, the tubes can be infected, the ovaries, ovaritis, and what have you. All right. So it is usually a serious illness. So when you hear people say that they have PID and they are looking at you and they are normal, it might not necessarily be so. It might be something that is less. But I want to quickly, what the video is all about is to talk about a concept of PID that has been erroneously diagnosed. So usually women will do a scan and the, after the ultrasound scanning and there will be a little fluid in the pouch of Douglas. Meanwhile, pouch of Douglas is just a space, you know, is a, a, an anatomical space that is present at the back of the womb. So there is a pouch there which can actually house some fluids, can house a lot of content from the inside part of the abdomen color, what is called the peritoneum. And they will say that that is PID. This is false. This is not true. That fluid can be housed by so many things. If a woman ovulates, there can be some little fluid from the ovarian content. If a woman has some little, um, you know, peritoneal irritation that can happen, then ranging to sinister things like even ectopic pregnancy and so on. But that not necessarily, you know, mimic or mean that once you see any fluid in a patch of dog glass, it is PID. That is very false. The gold standard for diagnosis of PID all over the world remains laparoscopy. All right. So how did this individual know that from this fluid, that means it's PID. So this is false, you know, and the, of course, the problem with this is that after the diagnosis, these women are exposed to a range of antibiotics, you know, and by the time they do that, they develop resistance. So from what is false, leading to another wrong diagnosis, leading to another wrong treatment, leading to worsening the problem for the woman. So this has to stop, all right? So how do you know that you have pelvic inflammatory? First of all, there will be a history of jumping from Elizabeth, you know, from uh, Amaka, from, uh, you know, then from John to this, you know, so multiple sexual partner, that's a predisposition, that's a risk factor for that, all right? Okay, so when that is happening, there's a possibility that the individual can, you know, have a possible so if there's a history a, a history like that then the first thing that how the individual present lower abdominal pain serious pain okay this pain can be so severe that the individual will know that there is a problem and of course when the individual is having menses you know during menstruation the pain tend to start from the beginning of the menses to the end of the menses we can also happen in endometriosis all right when an individual is seeing that a history of multiple sexual partner and apart from that you are now having this issue of very terrible pain during menses okay they will call it that what we call a secondary dysmenorrhea then there can be vaginal discharge foul smell vaginal discharge the woman keep treating it keeps coming back and all that you might suspect this woman might actually have a pid then during sex itself there will be what we call deep dyspareunia pain during sex all right this pain is during the sex itself during the act of sex itself the individual will have a serious pain all right when such a thing happens you might start thinking could it be a possible pelvic inflammatory disease and of course by the time you now come to see us the gynecologist by the time we examine we touch the abdomen there'll be so much pain upon touching what we call uh, abdominal tenderness and by the time we do what we call vaginal examination we are able to have what we call cervical excitation tenderness there will be a dexa tenderness so you can have a lot and we have what we could have criteria we use for the diagnosis we are going to discuss here it's about the scope of this discussion but what i'm saying is that this is a gamut of events before you can say the individual has pelvic inflammatory disease all right so the point i'm trying to make is that this issue of having fluid in the pouch of douglas pod meaning pid is wrong and it should stop so once you see that please tell you that you had a video like this and the gynecologist said that this is not actually true so if there is some other thing that you need to have an evaluation done please see the gynecologist we are here to tell you the truth we are here to allow you to ask questions 
please do ask questions and get the right treatment don't be a party to taking or over the counter antibiotic at all that any small thing on antibiotics this is wrong this is not good for you cheers see you in the next video